Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today is obviously a very exciting day. I mean, you're all here dressed very nicely. You have your family and your friends all here. It's a special day. And I got to tell you, I'm very proud of the 10 of you. I am. It's been a real privilege to be your pastor these last 18 months, to get to see the, the young men and women of faith that you are, to see your kindness and your heart for each other, for your neighbors, to see your willingness to learn, to grow in your faith. It's been a real privilege. And it's been awesome for this congregation. I've heard, you have no, many, no idea how many people have told me how much they have loved the testimonies that the 10 of you have shared over these last three weeks. It's been great for them, not only me or for Joe or for your small group leaders to see your faith, but for everyone in this church to be able to hear that. And I'm very excited that in about 10 minutes, we're going to be able to, to confirm you in your faith. But before we do that, I'm, I know this is not about me today, but I'm going to get a little self-involved anyway, okay? Because I really need some help right now. I mean, really badly need some help. I got a lot of people here who can give me some ideas maybe, but I really need some help today. And well, I'll, I'll be back in a minute. I got to get one thing from here, then I'll tell you what I need help with. So just give me one second. Okay, here we go. I really, really need your help. I gotta plant a tree. I don't know what I'm doing. It's embarrassing for me as well. I mean, I come from a family of farmers. Both of my grandfathers were farmers. My uncles are farmers. But somehow that green thumb leapt right over me. Because when I get around plants, they die. Even my, even my wife is a wonderful gardener. She does a great job of gardening. And she goes and she visits her family for two or three weeks every single summer. And she comes back and her garden is dead. Because I don't know what I am doing. Heidi's told me maybe if I watered the plants every now, now and again, they would actually grow, but I'm not for sure if I believe her yet or not. Maybe I'll try that sometime. But I need your help with this because I need to plant this tree and I don't know where to plant it. I mean, I could plant it right here in the middle of the sanctuary, dig up a hole here, plant it right there, and then Jeff Mockamel would kill me tomorrow, but I could do that. But do you think it would really grow very well? No, probably not. Or I could go out and stop all the traffic on Highway 7 and start digging up the, the pavement there and plant the tree there, but would that really work very well? Probably not. Or, I mean, I grew up in New Mexico, in the desert. I could take this back to the desert and plant it there, but only certain trees can really grow in the desert. This one may not actually do too bad. If you don't know, it's a fake. So there's a chance this one wouldn't die, but I wouldn't even bet on that for sure. But let's continue to imagine it's a real tree. A tree like this probably wouldn't grow in the desert. Now, trees, plants in general, need to have certain things to grow, right? Even somebody who doesn't know how to grow plants knows that. They need a good water source. They need a good soil. They need a place where they can get some good sunlight. If you put a tree in a place like that, there's a good chance it'll grow. And you know what? Faith is a lot like that plant, a lot like a tree. And it's throughout the Bible, we see that. Jesus uses parables over and over and over again, comparing faith to plants. The parable of the mustard seed. The parable of uh, uh, the sower. And uh, many other times where he compares faith to a plant. And really, that's what your faith is like. All of you in this room, but especially today, you 10, as we're talking about your confirmation, that is what faith is. It's like, it's like a plant that grows. And let's talk about that faith. You, you were given faith when you were brought here by your parents to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
That day, the Holy Spirit created faith in your heart. The same Holy Spirit that fell on those disciples on Pentecost Sunday 2,000 years ago, he came and fell in your heart at the waters of holy baptism, planted faith in your heart in that moment. It's not that you're smarter than other people. It's not that you're better than other people that you have that faith. That faith was given to you, planted by God in your hearts when you were baptized. Just like a tree is planted in the ground. And over the last... 13, 14 years of your life, that seed of faith has been watered. It's been watered by the word of God. And God has used people in your life to help water that faith. Your parents who brought you to church, who brought you, first of all, be baptized, but then brought you to church, who taught you the Bible stories that you know, who made you come to confirmation, That faith has been watered by your uncles and your aunts and your godparents and your grandparents. That faith has been watered by your teachers, your Sunday school teachers, your VBS leaders when you were younger, your small group leaders in confirmation. That faith has been watered by the pastors, the different pastors you've had in your life, by youth leaders like Joe that you've had in your life. That faith has been watered over these last three years as you've come to confirmation and you've learned about the Bible and God's love for you and you've learned about why we confess our sins and we need forgiveness. You've learned about the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Lord's Supper, baptism. Through all that, God has been watering your faith and you've been growing and growing and growing until now you come here today confirming that faith that was planted in your heart by the Holy Spirit and that has been grown by the word of God over these last 13 to 14 years for you. You stand here today with a faith that is rooted in the work and the love of God. I want to take a moment today just to read to you the passage that we have from Ephesians chapter 3. This is our theme verse for this year's class, for this Sunday. And St. Paul is writing and he says this, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. You know, I love what St. Paul is doing here. St. Paul is not writing this to people who've never heard about Jesus. He's not writing this to people who are going to church for the first time. He's writing it to people like you, Tim, here today. People who had the seed of faith planted in their heart. People who had the word of God proclaimed to them and were growing in their faith. He's writing to them. And what he's telling them and what he's telling all of us in this room today is this. Our faith is not rooted in in something empty. It's not rooted in a soil that will fail. It's rooted in love. But not just any love, not the love that your parents have for you, not the love that you have for a a, a sport or an activity or a food, but the kind of love, the love of Christ. It's rooted in the love of Christ. And what is that love of Christ? Well, the love of Christ is this that he would give up his throne in heaven to come down to earth and to die for your sins. You all know this because we've talked about this in confirmation a lot this year. All of you are sinful. You all need forgiveness. God loves you so much that he takes on your sin. He goes to the cross and he suffers and he dies for you. A death that you deserve. But he takes that punishment upon himself. He wipes it away and he rises from the grave. Your your faith is rooted in his love. It's not rooted in your actions. It's not rooted in your parents' faith. It's not rooted in, in coming to church and checking off boxes. It's rooted in his love, in his grace, and in his mercy. 
And I just want to say one more thing to you before I wrap up today and we, we go to the confirmation service, the confirmation portion of our service. And that is this. It's going to be tempting for you to treat this as the end of your faith journey, a graduation, so to speak. It's going to be easy for you to treat it that way. To maybe show up once or twice a year now that you've been confirmed. I really pray, and I do pray for each one of the ten of you. I really do. But I really pray specifically that the ten of you would continue to be rooted in Christ. Because there's going to be things in life that come up. And I know some of you have already had hard times in life. Some of you have already had things that have happened in your life that have really hurt, where you have felt alone, where you have felt abandoned, when you have felt forgotten. And guess what? It's going to happen again. And it's going to happen for all of you at some point or another. If you are rooted in Christ, he will hold you up. But if you go from here and you treat this like a graduation and you take that root of faith and put your faith in something else, it will not stand. Or if you go from here today and you treat it like a graduation and you come maybe once or twice a year and you deprive yourself of water, you deprive yourself of the word of God, you deprive yourself of of the sacrament that you're going to take part in the first time today, then your faith will begin to shrivel and be in real serious jeopardy. Because this is not a graduation. This is an ongoing part of your faith life. You are rooted in Christ Jesus. Continue to find your strength, your hope, your life in him. He won't let you down. When you do that, That faith is being planted in good soil. The water of life and the grace and mercy of God shining down on you. Be rooted in Christ. Amen. And now may this God of grace and mercy who loves you so much that he died for you be with you as you continue this journey of faith. Amen.